Welcome to Gen Z Hoops. The Gen Z Basketball Coaching and Sports Business Show. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Gen Z Hoops Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Pro Scout Consultant, Coach Cloud. Coach Cloud, how are you doing today, sir? All is well, man. How is everything with you? Appreciate you, you know, having me your time to uh, take me, to give my platform a chance to uh, grow. And uh, like I said, I appreciate you, man. Oh, no, of course. Thank you so much for reaching out. Um, Give me this opportunity to have you on the show today. Um, Just before we jump into our little conversation, can you talk a little bit about your connection to the game of basketball? Like I said, let me uh, start with, uh, I come from a basketball city of Dayton, Ohio. Like I said, uh, Dayton, Flyers, Wright State, real rich basketball history, even uh, a lot of high school, great talent over the years from uh, Daquan Cook, Norris Cole, and many pros overseas. Like I said, uh, just came from a strong, rich tradition of just the city just loves basketball. We had a strong run in the city. Uh, now the suburbs school is kind of taking over as far as uh, talent laws. But like I said, the city just loves the game of basketball. We just like to push it. And uh, that's all we know. We just bleed and uh, breed basketball every day. And uh, like I said, uh, my dad, he just was playing open gym at the uh, Boys and Girls Club. And I used to be in my crib with him while he was playing. And uh, that's just when the start of the uh, love of basketball just began. He just used to take me to games from uh, high school to uh, some college games. I used to watch O.J. Mayo and Bill Walker because uh, Cincinnati is not too far from Dayton. It's about 45 minutes away. Watching Daquan Cook, sell all gyms, Chris Wright. He uh, had a couple of cup of coffee in the uh, league with Golden State Warriors. And like I said, it's just like I've just been around good talent. And I guess that's where my eye for talent just uh, began to start, just watching – High low, high low talent for the past 15 years. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you mentioned um really um name that stuck with me, Norris Cole there. I am a fan of the Miami Heat. So, like, I grew up watching Norris Cole win those two championships back in yeah. 12 and 13 with LeBron and the crew over there. I remember, like, as he, like coming from New York, like, this is also, like, basketball, like, runs in our veins, basically, on the blacktop out here in New York. So, um, yeah, at a young age, my mom actually, like, kind of, like, was the first person to, like, put a ball in my hand. And um, funny thing you say that about Norris Cole. That was, like, our favorite – one of our favorite players on the Heat. We were like, man, why is Chalmers starting? We got to start <laughs> – we, we needed Norris to start at the point because, like, that grit and determination, I feel like, coming from, like, Ohio especially. I know, like, I actually went out there for a showcase, like, not too long ago. The, ki- the kids out there, they – all they know, fast, play fast, play fast. That's what I could say. Sure. And uh, funny story is, like I said, me and Norris Cole, we went to the same high school. His, uh, his oh. uncle was my teacher as well. He's one of my uh, favorite teachers as well. So, like I said, that's the funny. We said uh, when he was playing in uh, in the league, when Derrick Rose was still pretty healthy, he was like, yeah, Derrick Rose is going to cross your nephew up or something like that. We used to talk trash to him. But uh, like I said, yeah, Norris was a great player, though. Like I said, he, funny story, he really was a uh, football player at first. Really? He had no offers in like like Cleveland State gave him a chance. And like I say, you know, from this story, I want to learn people to learn is like all it takes is that one chance and you just gotta run with it. And that's kind of how my uh my coaching story kind of happened as well. Yeah, most definitely. So that leads us into our next point. At what point did you know that you wanted to get into coaching? Well, like I said, my uh my high school career didn't end the way I wanted to. So like I said, I was always had a, a knack for just like always watching old films. It was this uh old a website called NCAA Ball, and it had, like, all the old college games from, like, the NCAA tournament games. You can watch it from, like, the late 70s to now. And uh, at this time, I was just like, man, I still love the game, and I just want to, you know, I seen Eric Spolcher's story about being a video coordinator uh, around this time. I was like, and that's pretty cool. I want to get into video and just, like, just cut up film. And uh, that's when I emailed uh, the University of Akron and uh, just wanted to get into, like, film. Like, hey, I just want to start in the video room, cut up a film, and then – uh for my first day of college, which was probably uh, August 31st, 2013, I've been a part of college bo- basketball since then. And uh, just working for uh, the legendary Keith Danbrock, who just uh, retired. He was a uh, LeBron James, former high school coach, uh, just finished up at Duquesne. And like I said, just learned a lot from uh, that spot, just being a student manager and uh, being in the video room, sitting behind the bench. Uh, and that's when I just learned a lot about just being – uh, there for the players on the court because, like I said, that, that was just a, like a, a huge transition from coming from uh day into uh being a part of a a, a team fresh off the NCAA tournament appearance, working for uh and Coach Dan Brown was a pretty hard coach to work for as well. Uh, like I said, he was a hard nosed coach. Uh, if you ever seen the documentary more than the game, what you yep. seen in the first thirty minutes, that's what you see in real life. Like I said, he's a high energetic dude, little guy, but he's like very fiery. 
sometimes me and him will bump heads at times. Like I said, I'm like real passionate as well too. But uh, that's kind of what led to my independency as far as just being an independent uh scout. But uh, like I said, that Akron uh journey was very very interesting. Like I said, just learned a lot about cutting film, learning different offenses like horns, uh pressing. Also, uh former coach Shaka Smart used to uh coach under uh. Keith Dambrow, Lamont Perez at South Carolina. So a lot of good coaches came out of uh, Keith Dambrow's coaching tree, which is, I always will give credit to him. Like I said, uh, I learned a lot from him, especially Horns. Like I said, that Horn set, which is a lot of guys are in the pros and overseas running at the two high elbows. That's what really shows uh, good spacing. Like you see a player like Joker play at the high post or uh, Dante Sabonis. They all pretty pretty right. play well at that Horn set. And uh, like I said, that's how I just started. Uh, I was a student manager there for three and a half years. And uh, like I said, uh, just like I learned a lot of game about just how hard it is to win in college basketball, like just just to win 20 games. So, like I said, it's a really, really tough job. And I, and that's what I, I learned a lot about just being there at Akron. From my perspective of like playing college basketball and also like being a part of the team and stuff like that, I read sure my first year. But like so that gave me like the opportunity to kind of like see it, what you were just talking about, like kind of see the games through a different lens, like kind of see like different actions, different defensive schemes of both teams on each side. Um, from your perspective, though, would you say, like, just – would you say, like, it was more set-orientated when you, when you were at Akron, your time there, or was it more, like, running gun, fast pace? Like, I know a lot of, like, Division One schools, like, they have, like, a horns or a floppy set just, like, just to get something moving. Or would you guys have – would you guys just use those, like, set plays, or would it be, like, more like, oh, let's move the rock around, let's use the whole shot clock to well, uh, I, our advantage? I, I, I'll say this, like, around the time I was a freshman in college when I started this, like, this is right before the Golden State Warriors is really about to take off. So this is about two years before they won their first championship. So, like, the basketball was still kind of play kind of like, I'm going to say pre-Curry the way they play, like pre-three-point right. shooting heavy. Like, we shot the ball a lot of threes, but we was inside out. We was trying to get it to the big. We had, like, a, a right. lot of strong big men over the year. Like a four-out really one in. Yeah, four out one in. And we just used to like pound it inside to those. Uh, we had like traditional uh, back to the basket guys at, at that point in time. Oh. Then kind of over time, they kind of get start recruiting stretch fours and uh, it's kind of playing that small ball running gun. But like I said, at that time, like basketball was like a real slower pace. Like I said, uh, the, the, the only way we kind of speed it up was like we would press them. But like outside of that, like, you know, they're walking up the court or trying to get a three inside it out. That's just how that was at that type type of ball during college basketball, real slow pace, trying to grind it out, try to get an open shot. Yeah, most definitely. So other than other than Akron University, you also coach at institutions such as Fordham University and Notre Dame College. What experience was it like coaching at these universities and ultimately just coaching college basketball in general? Well, first, before I went to Fordham, this is how I got led to Fordham. Like I said, uh, after I graduated from college, uh, I wanted to get into full-time coaching. So then I had a decision to make. I was like, damn, do I want to stay at home, coach high school? I really didn't want to coach high school. I wanted to, like, really learn, coach high-level basketball. Because, like I said, I had been around it my whole life. And I was like, all right, I think it's time to take that jump. Because sometimes in your life, you got to take that 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 leap of faith. Like, all right, do I want to do this or not? And uh, I went. I ended up going to Jersey, uh, Belmar, New Jersey. Uh, it's right on the Jersey Shore, not too far from Asbury Park, where they shot Jersey Shore. Never been to Asbury Park, by the way. But uh, – it's a real, real beautiful beach town and uh, right. coached by Coach Ian Turnbull, Covenant College Prep. And uh, that gave me a chance to coach, uh, really be a full-time coach and be hands-on as a, like, as just a, as a player's coach, X and O's, videos, uh, trainer. I was doing a, a lot wow. of uh, different hats when I was uh, working there. So that really gave me uh, a good idea of, like, do I really love this or do I really not? And uh, shout-out to Coach Ian Turnbull. And like I said, we ended up coaching uh, three Division One players on that team. Played against a uh, hard gray blur cat. We played against a real tough schedule, and I was like, I said that's when I really got an introduction of just really just being a full time coach and just grinding. Like I said, I have uh, Nick Jordan. He's at a uh, University of Memphis. Dwayne Jones. He's at Mercer now. Just came moved up from D two. Samir Klinsler. He was at a West Virginia State. Real high level D two guy. And then the tart now. He's at a. Uh, he was at Coppin State. Now he's finishing up at Townsend. So like I said, I coached up a lot of uh, talented players that got me to Fordham. So like one thing I'll say is like. Uh, if you're on pretty good teams and you have good players, like the, the players will uh, lead you the way to like where you want to go. I'll say that. And uh, that, with that good season, that led to Fordham, me being a GF Fordham under uh, Jeff Newbauer. And like I said, just being there, it was a uh, definitely a culture shock. Cause like I said, uh, Fordham is a kind of like a real preppy school and uh, kind of like an Ivy league school. And I'm more kind of like, you know, I'm just, uh, how can I say this? Like I said, I'm more just 
kind of just like a more free spirit and they're, and they're more kind of like uptight, you know, can't play uh loud music in the gym and stuff like that. So like, that's one thing we had to get yelled at for. But uh, like I said, it's like a real good experience just to uh grow. Like I said, the Bronx is the Bronx. It's uh real grimy, but I said, it's a good place to, uh you know, play basketball there, beautiful campus. Um, But I said like Jeff Newbar, he was a good coach. Uh, End of uh, not finishing the season too long, but like I said, uh, it was I had a fun time there. I learned a lot about just uh, the rules of the game, um, just like just being in the coaches meeting with uh, different Division One coaches as well. Like I had uh, Dennis Felton, who's at Providence. Wow. He was a, a former coach at Georgia and uh, works in Kentucky as well. And I also had a uh, Anthony Evans, who was a, a coach at Norfolk State, where they beat uh, Missouri in the uh, NCAA tournament in 2012, and he was at uh, FIU, Florida International. And I said them two guys. Or my mentor and also uh interim coach Mike DePauli at I hopped her in a very instrumental in my uh coaching career as far as when I was at Fordham. And like I said, uh that was like just three head coaches right there that just, just uh really shaped up my uh my young college career when I was uh, at Fordham. So I always appreciate that time there. It was during the COVID season, and uh like I said, uh I wish we could have won more games. Like I said, if you look on Kempon, we probably was like one of the worst teams there, but still, like that experience, like I said, which is uh, amazing. Like we ended up beating uh Dayton, University of Dayton. The first time 16 years and now you know i'm a dating kid so like that was real special to me just being known like i said uh i'm always will be a Florida man because like i said they uh they just gave me the uh the tools to be great was that when they had obi toppin uh that was a year after yeah that was the year after yeah, yeah. that's when they had uh jalen crutcher he's uh he was playing with the new orleans pelicans uh at that time so obi had just left oh wow that's amazing yeah, I don't yeah, I don't think we'd be Obi if uh, we didn't we didn't have guys to go our Obi for that for that team. <laughs> he was um, I think um, college player of the year or something like that when he was at Dayton. Yeah. Yep, yeah, 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 That's yep, insane. yeah. And so uh, you, I, I would say also when I was at Fordham, uh, Joel Sor- Soriano, I want to give him a shout out. He's a trainer for the NBA draft. He's at St. John's. Me and him used to work out all the time. So like I said, I definitely had some uh, t- tremendous pros when I was at Fordham as well. Wow, it's amazing that to be um acquitted with such amazing people. Um, so you mentioned when you're at your prep school, um, that you were like kind of worked as like a trainer as well. What was like your philosophy when like working with your players? I'll say this, like, man, just work on game shots, man. Do some, do something what you're going to do in the game, man. Like, don't waste your time, man. Get your reps the way you want to. Like, this is like a job. Like, if you clock in at your nine to five or whatever you do, you want to get as many reps as you can to maximize what you want to do. You don't want to just work on stuff that you already are good at. You want to work on what your weaknesses on so you can counter that. Cause like I said, at the college level, people want to like it. D- defenses are really hard to play against and it's real physical compared to uh some leagues. So like I said, you want to have a counter for everything and uh, just always just be prepared for adversity, just going moving forward as far as just like, if, if things are not going your way, stay in the gym and just keep, keep staying consistent and uh keep your routine going. Yeah, of course. Well, one thing my coaches when I I went to Salisbury, um, it's a Class A NEPSAC school, actually. So, um, what they would always preach to me, like if my shot isn't falling in the game, like I learned this, like going through high school, that there's like more than one way of being like effective in a basketball game. That could be like getting stops on defense, rebounding, just giving one hundred percent energy and hustle. So, like I learned that as well. And of course, like what you just said like stay in the gym of course like there will be games where I couldn't hit a three for my life I remember like last year senior year I couldn't hit a three for my life I'll just stay on the shooting gun like after the game wouldn't yeah. leave the gym the whole night skip dinner so yeah got to take it seriously like it's a nine to five actually like also when I was at the uh Covenant College Prep like I said uh I learned how to be a mentor to the young young uh talent as well like I said sometimes some guys will hit that wall of just like I said we used to do 500 push-ups a day <laughs> twice a day so that's a thousand pushups a day uh i had to make sure i count every single push-up like i said uh it was like a real old school structure type of uh workout Coach plan, Carter like workouts said. right there right yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> some guys like i said we, we finished the, we, we had the season with 16 guys finished with 10 so like i said a lot of people wasn't built for that but like the, the 10 that survived that stayed they have they go they uh went on to have a good career and plan and they're still playing today so i will say that though for sure though like i said uh just like it just you gotta mentally be strong for this. Like I said, it's gonna test you as far as like the game, your coaches, being with schoolwork, just like it's, it's you just have to lock in. And that's what I learned out there. It's like, hey, if you really want something, you have to really lock in. Yeah, and like course. I said, and be be open to criticism. Cause like I said, if I wasn't open to criticism from my uh my head coach, my mentor, coach in, I probably wouldn't be here. Like I said, it wouldn't be no coach cloud. Cause like I said, uh nowadays, like you know, players could eat you alive as far as like, what they want to say or what they want to do. And uh, he definitely prepared me that for sure. 
Yeah, most definitely. I also I also feel like a big thing as well as like not being afraid to fail as well, like putting yourself out there and putting yourself in positions where it's like where it's like, oh, this might not go my way, but I'm not going to stop getting better and I'm not going to stop like chasing my goal at the end of the day. You can't be sure. afraid of failure. Not at all. Like I said, uh, failure is a part of growth. Like I said, uh, that's like not taking a wide open shot because like, oh, I'm scared I'm going to miss it. Yeah. If you're a shooter, you shoot the ball. That's what I kind of tell my shooters. Yeah, of course. So when I was doing my little research and preparing for this interview, I, I, I saw that you're, you give a lot of advice to college players who want to enter the portal and like those looking to like excel in their programs as well. Can you go into more detail about this advice that you give these college athletes? Well, like I said, I, I always tell them, like, man, just like as far as like in the NIL, I say like, hey, man, don't chase the money. Chase a good fit, you know, a good basketball fit. Like I said, if you need to go on Synergy and check out what kind of scheme or schematic, if that coach has fit you. Like I said, I had a uh, a former Division two player when I was at coaching at Notre Dame College. Shout out to all my uh, Notre Dame D2 guys. They uh, definitely uh, helped me transition to a, where I'm at today as well. And uh, like I said, I had a, a player of mine's uh, – he was asking me, I was like, he was like, yeah, man, uh, I feel like I like this school, but it doesn't really fit my style. So I told him, I was like, well, you don't want to share minutes going to your senior year. So, like, you just have to have different uh, ideas of where you want to go, like how you want to fit, how you want to play this year. Because, like I said, now, I was saying, you know, it's like free agency now where you can pick where you want to go. So, like, you got to pick that spot because, like I said, you don't want to just keep transferring and transferring. And, then, like I said, if you're, if you're not having good years, it's going to look real, real bad. It's like, okay, he's running away from my adversity. But, you know, if you want to just keep moving up, moving up, that's fine. Just, like, as long as you're getting better. So, like I said, just as long as it's, if the fit works, not chasing money. And, like I said, if you just connect with the staff and the rest, it could be history, though. It could be, like, a real, real good uh, blessing in disguise, like, when you leave. certain. Like I said, all stuff's not going to work out for whatever, just, like, leaving a job. So, like I said, if you want to just have a clean slate, that's fine. Because, like, sometimes coaches can – you know, trickle your mind, can test you. It's not a good fit. It's just how it is. I don't know why coaches do that, Tom. Kind of mind-boggling, but hey, it is what it is in this business. So, like I said, uh, you got to find, you know, your uh, your tribe. Find your tribe that's going to respect you and uh, make you the best player at the end of the day. That's what I kind of tell guys. Yeah, of course. Uh, another big thing, well, like, a lot of my coaches and trainers have told me, like, when I was going through the whole recruiting process is go where you're wanted. I feel like that was, like, a big, a big thing as well. Like, you don't want to go somewhere where it's, like, where it's like you're just going to be like kind of like a pawn in like someone else's program, you know what I mean? Where you're, you're just moved out of like position in a way. You go where like they're going to like effectively like play you to and get you better and, and help you to in the best position for you to succeed lo in longevity wise. I feel like that's a, sure. that's a big thing. Like I said, as long as somebody's uh, in your corner, talk like, you know, like I said, how Coach Ian helped me when I was a young coach. Like he just kept it real from jump. A lot yeah. of players like to hear what, like, what they want to hear. Which is, yeah. that's cool, but, like, that's not really good. It's, like, pacifying. It's, like, being a baby. You're just kind of pacifying them to uh, where you want them to go as far as, like, what they really need to hear so they yeah. can grow as a person. as Because uh, at the end of the day, the world. Yeah, right. It's not realistic at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, most definitely. So, currently, you are a pro scout consultant with your own company, Cloud Hoops. Can you talk a little bit about, like, your company and the work you do and how you started your company in general? Well, let me say, uh, let me give you the story of how I started this. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had, uh, like I said, when I was at Fordham, we had just got let go. I said, my coach got fired in the uh, middle of the year, which is like, just like that, all that experience right there is like during COVID season, it was just a hard pill just to swallow. Just, and that just showed me like how tough the business can be. And I saw all the stress and all that. But then I seen, uh, I was like, okay, how can I not get fired or avoid this? In the long term, I don't want to just go job to job every year or if, you know, just go to a staff that I may not, you know, gel with. So, like, I was like, hey, I want to help players, directly help players and coaches with using my network and using my knowledge of the game. So, like, that's how I uh, created Cloud Hoops. But, like I said, I didn't create Cloud Hoops till last year, cause like I said, but I always was just grinding and just to see, like, what is my niche? And one thing, if that's on the court or in business or anything you do, like, find your niche. And, you know, a lot of people might hear that that cliche term, but it's really true, though. Like I said, I feel like I was a way better scout than I was at breaking down that film than I was probably as I just being a head coach moving forward. Right. So I feel like me being a scout was a better niche for me because, like I said, uh, I had tried to help my uh, Division II players, and I was at Notre Dame College uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. And, like I said, we we uh, did pretty well there. And I said a lot of talented players at, at the Division II uh, level, and that's it. 
definitely opened my eyes to scout because I was like, dang, the Division Two players, they can go overseas too. I didn't know that coming from Division One. So that was mind open to me. So like I said, I had met a uh I went to Portsmouth and uh Virginia, and that's like where all the top seniors in the nation, you know, go to play in front of NBA scouts and talent. And I met an Italian partner and uh they had told me, and I told him about one of my players, Jaden Willis, who's uh just finished up in Denmark, one of the best shooters I've probably ever coached. And uh, like I said, he averaged 20 points back to back uh first team in the conference in the Mountain East Conference. And uh, like I said, shot over uh 35% from three, wow, close to 40. So, like I said, he was a really, really good shooter. And uh, he's like one of the he's the first real pro I ever coached. And uh, like I said, uh, just don't going through his process, he kind of showed me him and his father, you know, they prepared me to what it is now. Like I said, just going on calls, working with the uh, different people, trying to get him a gig. And uh, the now, like I said, I uh, my first person I had signed was uh, Terry Collins out of Mississippi Valley State. He had uh, gave me a uh, he believed in me. The, uh, give him a chance in his career. Like, I was a rookie, he was a rookie. And uh, now he's playing in Georgia, just finished up. So, like I said, uh, sometimes when you say, when you take that leap of faith on yourself, it just, everything kind of just aligns as you go, though, as far as, like, you may not know what you're doing at first, but like, okay, now I'm crafting this. Uh, just, just keep working on your craft. Just keep working, just like in basketball, just keep working on that move. Right. So, like, I just kept working on my moves. You kept working on my craft. Just kept uh, becoming a better networker became uh you know found different ways how to get players contact information start networking with coaches that's how i got led me to the portal so like i said just uh just definitely work networking on different levels it kind of helped me also i've always been a uh a, a good people person working in hr so like that's another part of my background right there like i graduated in uh, human resources so like me being a uh human resource i just took every skill i uh i learned from every job i worked over the years outside of basketball and turned it into my business as well to make cloud hoops and like I said, I just wanted to just really just help players and coaches, you know, take their game to the next level. Like I said, if they want to go pro with my network, I can help them go pro. Now, if they want to go, uh, you know, transfer in the portal, I can, you know, hit people in my network as far as coaches and people that I know that are looking for guards or bigs or wings. So it's just really just about uh, using my network. And that kind of just shaped me out to uh, create cloud hoops. Would you say like building that trust aspect with these players is like one, the most challenging thing about this job i would say like for me being a coach it's kind of just like recruiting a player all over again like i said i feel like uh i'm a real stand-up guy and that's one thing you like that's a good question just having trust like you're trusting they're, they're trusting me with their career to help right. them you know move up and that's one thing i'll say like that's a privilege to have like i take that with the highest regard like all right man you gave me your trust like like i said with terry he trusted me he didn't have really nothing going on now he's playing in georgia so like i said if you trust the right people and then they're not just telling you everything you want to hear. And, you know, just keeping it transparent with them at the end of the day. Everything is not going to be the yellow brick road or just roses and all that. It's going to be a grind. Like I said, I'm a grinder. And I, I like to recruit guys that's uh, stand-up guys and grinders. So, like, that's one thing. This It's all about respect, too, though. Like, just if they respect what I'm trying to do, I re I'm always going to respect my clients no matter what what level who, what level or person they are. So, like I said, I'm always trying to uh, maximize their potential. That's my job is trying to find the right people to connect them to get the right opportunity at the end of the day. Sheesh, I wish I had you when I was going through the recruiting process, man. Hey, man, hey, like I said, things happen, man. Like I said, that's why I wanted to, you know, come on here, you know, tell my story so I can help players and coaches moving forward, uh, like I said, because I feel like uh, I'm not just, it's not about me. It's about the players and, you know, helping teams win. And, like, just on and off the court, like I said, make sure – they're good mentally. Like I said, I know uh mental health is real big today, especially being mental men's mental health month. Like I said, they all like people you always need something outside of coaches just to talk to. And me having that experience with dealing with uh agents, coaches, players, like I said, I just feel like my knowledge of the game is really just good for cloud hoops to really just put it out there now. Yeah, most definitely. So what are the future aspirations for your career? Like I said, my future aspirations would be uh to get a couple of NBA guys that's like kind of be like Coach Cal, how he had like a pipeline of NBA guys. Yep. That's my goal. And just overseas, continue to be overseas as well. Like I said, I dabbled with the uh, NBA draft uh, a couple of times this year with a couple of prospects, but now I know what to do next uh, recruiting period. So like I said, uh, you may see me in the green room next year. You never know, hopefully. But uh, just uh, just keep pushing. Though. Like I said, uh, my, my dream goes to be like a GM of the New York Knicks. That would be cool. Hopefully they don't win the championship before I get there. Just to, uh, just like I said, I just like building things, helping teams win just from, uh, like I said, just being that connector, being a reason why uh, this guy's here, this guy's here. Just like just being a a, a black godfather as far as in the basketball world. Like I said, it was a, a film under uh, Netflix I seen when I was really coaching in Jersey. It's called The Black Godfather. 
about Clarence Avon. And he was just a connector of uh, men of like from music to sports to politics. And that's how I kind of built my uh, my inspiration for just being like him, just to being a guy that could just connect you to any room, just from Europe to America to anywhere. Uh, so that's how I kind of just like going to be my aspiration, kind of be like a the GM, the godfather. Under if if if, if, that, if that doesn't work out, just uh, you know being able to help play high level players from from now on. Of course. Well, Coach Cloud, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your journey and your career, and um, just thank you so much for giving me this opportunity again. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Like I said, appreciate you uh, for giving me the time to uh, tell my story and uh, to promote my platform. Also, players, coaches, follow me at, at Cloud Hoops Consulting on Instagram, on TikTok as well. Like I said, appreciate it, everybody. And uh, like I said, thank you, Ashley. Thanks for listening to Gen Z Hoops. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe on Instagram, LinkedIn, and all major social media platforms at Gen Z Hoops. You can tune in and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and every other podcast platform on the planet. Get ready for the next episode.